So now we're going to be looking at some past questions to see how to apply the concepts that we've learned to solve questions. So the first one, we're told that P is on the locus of points equidistance from two given points X and Y. So we have two points X and Y. And we're told that P is on the locus of point equidistance from two given points. Before, we've discussed that the locus of point equidistance from two given points is equal to the line perpendicular to those points. So now, the locus of points will be a line perpendicular to x, y. So this is the locus of point that we are interested in. I was told that P lies on the locus of that point. So we can assume that P is on any point over here. So let's indicate it as P. Now I was told that UV is a straight line through Y that is parallel to the locus. So this is the locus of point. So now I was told that there is a line UV that is parallel to that locus. So we have a line UV that passes through Y and is parallel to the locus. Now, if angle PYU is 40, so where is that? If angle PYU, so this angle over here, let me do it. If angle PYU, so this angle over here, if it is what 40 degrees, find angle XYP. Angle XYP. So to find this angle XYP. So I told to find this angle over here. And let me call that angle A. So this angle right here, let me call it A. So now, as you can see, the locus of the point is a what? Is a perpendicular bisector. So the angle over here is what? 90 degree. Similarly, since the line UV is parallel to this locus of points, the angle here also is going to be perpendicular and the angle over here will also be 90 degree. So you know that the angle over here plus this angle over here must be equal to 90 degree. So I can write out that 40 plus A is equal to 90 degrees. So A is equal to 90 minus 40. And that gives me 50 degrees. So the angle XYP is 50 degrees. And the correct option to this question is option C. In this question, we are told that, uh, our that the locus of all points, a distance 8 centimeter from point N passes through T and S. So we have a point N, and we are told that the locus of all points, a distance 8 centimeter from point N. So we have several distances 8 centimeter from point N. And when you trace out that locus, as you know by now, is going to give you what a cycle so you are going to have a cycle because the cycle is locus of point that it is done with a fixed distance from the center in which the radius is going to be what eight and now we are told that this point passes through point t and s so that means at two points one t and one s the point passes through there i know that since the radius is eight distance will be constant now i told that if s is equidistance from T and N. So if S is equidistance, that means distance from S and T is same thing as distance from S and T, same thing as distance from S and N. So we are told to find the area of the triangle. So I'm going to draw out that triangular part out. And what we have, we have something like this, like this, and like this. And this is the center N. Now, we are told that the two radiuses here, here, here and here, is going to be 8 cm and 8 cm, and these are point T, and these are point S. And we are told that if S is equal distance from T and N, that means distance between S and N is the same distance as from S and T. So, what does it mean? It means that the distance here is also 8. Now, we are now told to find the area of the triangle and this is pretty straightforward so as you can see the length of all these angles here the length of all the sides here are equal so this means that this is an equilateral triangle and the angle will be equal so we have 60 degree over here 60 degree over here and 60 degree over here so to find the area 
the area of a triangle is equal to what half times base times height so you can try to figure out what the height is and calculate the area or you can also represent the area as half times a times b times times c for further clarification you can check up the section on trigonometry so if you can write the area of a triangle as this also then i can write the area as what well, half where a are two of the sides the length of two of the sides and t sin t is the angle so in this case i can write the follow as let me call this opposite side small s this opposite side small l and this opposite side small t so i can write it as what well, s times t times sin n and what would that be half times s is 8 t is 8 and sine of n in this case is 60 degrees sine of 60 degree and i know that sine of 60 degrees is with 3 over 2 2 year 1 and 2 in 8 gives me 4 8 times 4 gives me 32 and sine 30 is with 3 over 2 you should know this and if you don't know that try to learn that and you can check out the section on trigonometric ratio to know the value of some common sines and cosines so when i divide 2 year 1 2 into 2 gives me 16 so I'm left with what? 16 root 3 cm square. So the correct option to this question is option B. So as you can see, this question combines both the knowledge of loci and the knowledge of finding the area of a triangle. So to recap, what we first did is that we tried to draw out the path defined by the loci or by the defined law, and we found out to be a cycle. And at that point, T and S lies along those paths. We are not told to calculate the triangle formed by those three points. So those triangles, we know that the length TN and SN are both 8. But we are told that ST is equidistant to SN, meaning that the distance from SN to ST are the same. And since SN is 8, we concluded that ST is also 8. So when we've gotten that, then we drew that outside. And since all the sides were equal, then it means that the angle must be equal and this gives us an equilateral triangle and the of a triangle can be written as half times base times height so you can proceed and try to figure out what the height of this triangle is but a shorter will be used an alternative formula as half a b sin c in which one we applied we got our area to be half times a times b times size 60 and which our final answer we got was now what 16 with 30 centimeter square so the correct answer again to this question is option B. Now on to the next question. So we're told that our, the locus of a point P which moves on one side of a straight line XY. So now we have a straight line XY. Line XY. And we're told that the locus of point P moves only on one side. So I'm going to assume that it moves at the upper side. You can assume that it moves only at the lower side. Any one you do, you result in the same answer. Another, so that angle X, P, and Y is equal to 90 degree. So that means if I have my point P over here, so I have angle X, P, and Y. Let me draw that. Is equal to what? 90 degree. Then, so what is the locus of that point called? So that means if I trace at any point P, that lies above this line and i chase it out the angle must always be constant and the angle must always be 90 degree now for you to answer this question correctly you really need to know cycle theorem so if you don't know cycle theorem you can check out the last two videos we did to understand cycle theorem so now if you remember one of the theorems that we talked about we said if we have a cycle And this is the center and we have a line that passes through the center or the diameter and we draw a line towards the circumference of the cycle from one edge to the other edge that the angle between them or the angle at the circumference must always be equal to what 90 degrees if you remember so if i draw a line from here also and it comes to this point the angle over here will be 90 degree if I draw a line over here and it comes to this point, the angle will be 90 degrees. 
So the question NATO tells us that the angle x and y is always equal to 90 degree. So what does that mean? It means that when I trace out all the paths in which P passes through, I'm de definitely going to just have sort of a circular object like this. But now, since I'm told that point P only lies in one half, it's not going to extend backwards. I'm going to have only half of a circle. And what is half of a circle? Half of a circle is a semicircle. So the correct option is option B semicircle. So to recap what we did, we, we called our theorem or circle theorem that tells us that when we have a line passing through the center and we draw a line from one of the end of the diameter to the circumference and back to the other end, that the angle at the circumference always equals to 90 degrees. So if I trace out all these parts together, I'm going to have a cycle. But this question tells us that only that P only moves on one side of this line. So it means it either only moves up or it moves down. So if I consider that P only moved down, then what I would have resulted in would be something like this, which is also a semicycle. So either way you consider, you result in a semicycle. So the correct option is semicycle. So now this is the last question that I'll be talking about. And here we are told to find the locus of a point equidistance of the intersection of lines this and this so now we are given two lines equation of two lines as you can see but this is kind of like a trick question because it's fairly straightforward and you don't need to start graphing out all these lines on the graph sheet or so you can just make two rough sketch of this line it wouldn't affect the result so you have two lines first one is 3x minus 7y plus 7 I was told that they intersect. So we have another line. So you can draw any line. And that line is what? 4x minus 6y plus 1. So I thought that the locus of, the locus of points equidistance from the intersection. So where is the intersection? The intersection is at this point. So I thought that the locus of point that is equal or that is equal distance to this intersection. So does that mean? It means I can trace out separate points that equal distance so i can have this line over here this point is equal distance to this intersection and i can trace that out I can, as i can see they are all equal distances to the center or the intersection of those two lines so if i trace out all those points what do i result or what do i get as you can see i get what a cycle so the locus of point equidistance on the intersection of two lines like we talk these two lines is what a cycle so it does not matter what the equation of the lines are or what the lines are provided you are looking for the locus of point equidistance on the intersection of any two lines then the answer is always going to be a cycle so the correct option here is b which is what sac a cycle so the locus of point equidistance on the intersection of these two lines is a cycle so this again i should mention that sometimes you can be given some questions that might look complicated to solve like here you might start out by trying to graph these lines but as you can see it does not really matter so as an indication when you see that a question is going to look too complicated to solve then you should always know at the back of your mind that there is an easier approach that you are not figuring out and if you're able to figure it out then you find out that solving the question is actually something that is pretty straightforward because bear in mind jump will never give you questions that cannot be solved within a considerable considerably or relatively short amount of time so what i will suggest now is that you go through the exercise section and try to solve as many questions as you can and also you can go to the past question and try to look for additional questions relating to the loci and if you have any challenge you can make sure you use the forum so that you can connect with other students and if i'm available i can also look at some of the questions and try to attend to them. So that will be all for now. Bye.